It was actually a little uh, risque, you know, a little off to something something. I'd gotten up to get water one day and I came back to my computer and I had, you know, that blinking one in my inbox and I had this note that said, I love your dress. And no, I just kind of feel like the rest is history. I'm pretty old fashioned and I would normally never approach someone first, but in this case I did. I don't know what it was, but something made me just send the message. So I was kind of embarrassed about it and I just, you know, got on the old Facebook and opened up the message and I was like, hey. And it sort of started as simply as that. I'm Leandra. And I'm Amelia. And, and this, this is how we met. met. <laughs> it was it was actually like if you text a guy first and then instantly you're like that was so stupid I sounded so dumb like why did I say hey was why did I use an exclamation point point? and I definitely did feel like I had a leg up I was like this idiot clearly not from New York wants to be my friend so bad and I was right I wrote back thank you so much and I wanted to give a compliment back but I didn't quite have one because it didn't seem merited or warranted or deserved. And I really did want to compliment her, but her her Facebook picture was her in like this like very decadent white bustier. She was wearing a bra as a blouse, and I just felt like that stood for everything that I hate. It was from my 20th birthday, and I looked awesome. All I know is that when I turned 20, I wore a freaking button down. <laughs> Not for nothing, she kind of is Carrie Bradshaw. <laughs> but so anyway, we became really fast friends because I, I learned that she was living on the Upper East Side, which is where I was living at the time, aka the artist formerly known as my parents' apartment. You left and you went abroad. Yeah, and I, I went abroad in August. And I stayed in the city and she was she was in Paris and I still didn't really I, I joked and told her to come visit, okay? I was like, yeah, come visit. I was trying to be hospitable, but like not in an authentic way. I was just like, yeah, definitely come. Bring your dad, I don't know, yeah. yeah. So she called me like two weeks into my semester think, and she's like, I, my dad bought me a plane ticket. I'm coming to Paris. No. And I was like, my apartment is literally the size of my foot, which is a size six. No, you invited, you were like, no, I miss you, come. Uh huh. Before that, we I did. I wasn't sure if I liked her yet. <laughs> you invited me. I think that I think that, that definitely solidified our friendship. Yeah. We grew really, really close. Anna became friends with your other friends. We went visiting. to go see Sacre Coeur, uh, which is by <laughs> Montmartre. She was wearing these liquid latex <laughs> black leggings as pants. You can like you could see the butt coming out of the and it was obscene. I, I was could going not through believe. a sartorial transition. She was. Trying to find myself in clothes. But you weren't wearing clothes is the thing. <laughs> right. And then she took an internship. She took so many. She worked everywhere. She prostituted herself on the PR editorial fashion circuit. You can't have a job that I haven't had. I like my steps. So like in my mind, I had like, this was the right step. This is the next step. This is the step that follows. And Leandra, as she likes to do, is trying to just like shake it up. Just fuck it up. Well, so I, while I was asking her, or my deciding to ask her to come work with me was really driven by my own like stress and frustration and understanding that I was sitting on something that was so much bigger than me that needed uh, to be supported by people who had the same vision that I did, who understood what I meant, who, were, who would be able to, to contribute to this like very unified voice that wasn't just my voice. And so I like literally called her one afternoon and essentially threatened our friendship and was like, if yeah. you don't come work at Man Repeller, I don't think I can know you anymore, which is oddly also how um, I got my husband to marry me. Um, not about working for me, but <laughs> lots of threatening. I do that a lot, yeah. Yeah, well it definitely lets you know when you're when you're needed. Mm -hmm. And then when that happened, I remember hanging up the phone and then I thought about it for a minute and then I was kind of like, you know, like, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Yeah, and then um, and then I asked a few people and they were like, I don't know what you're waiting for. You should do this. And so then I called her back and I was like, guess who's coming to work for Man Repeller? I think we're pretty good at like leaving it in the workplace too. Like we could have like a very tense and like heavy, you know, very completely work focused day. And then it's like the clock strikes and then we're like, you wanna go get a drink? And we still talk about work, but like the friendship the friend hat, hat comes on. The friend hats, we call nope. it. Sometimes we text each other and we're like, friend hat. And like, no matter what's Followed happening. Followed by, I think I have a yeast infection. Um, even like, the, the friend hat rule is that like even if I accidentally said that like a post infection in case you didn't hear me 
<laughs> Vietnamese set of posts live. Um, I've never had one of those before. Having you on board has been the greatest treat of life, other than raisins, <laughs> which are a literal treat from nature. So that's that. We'll see what happens next. Could be nothing, could be everything.